Hi there, I've reached that point in my Edward P51 build where I now need to paint some stripes on the wing. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show how to make masks. Um, one of the things that I'll be needing to make are masks for these wing stripes. Now that's not exactly hard as they're straight lines that run across the top and bottom of the wing, but as you can see from refer this reference photo of the real airplane, this plane had very noticeable yellow stripes and obviously they were used for identification purposes and were carried by 15th Air Force P-51s. There are some Air 15th Air Force P-51s that don't have these stripes, but this particular airplane clearly had them. So what do I know about these stripes? I know this plane had them and I know they're stripes and I know they're yellow. Um, they're also 15 inches across. So that's, that's pretty good. That's a good start. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my silhouette editor and I'm going to um, make me a 15 inch stripe. Now the question is 15 inches. How much is 15 inches? In 148 scale in millimeters because I like to work in millimeters when I'm working in scale. So I know that the original is 15 inches and I know I want to make that in 148 scale and I know that I want that to be in millimeters. According to my scale, cal scale calculator that I developed a few years back, that works out to 7.94 millimeters. Now 7.94 millimeters is not a problem for the cutter to make, so I'll easily make that. So my, my strategy for making these, these masks is I'm going to make a center section that's 7.4 millimeters wide and then I'm going to make two other pieces that will be the uh, masking pieces that I that will uh, go around it on either side of this centerpiece and then I'll remove the centerpiece and paint the yellow so uh, so the first thing I need to do is make a block so I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw it I don't actually even care what the size is um, I'm going to go up here and I have a 1.96. Now I already know that I want my my middle section to be 7.94, right? Because that represents 15 inches in 148 scale. Remember, 7.94. All right. So now what we have to do is ponder what. Oh, I'm going to delete that. Well, I actually don't need to. I just need to make this. Let's make this three millimeters. Let's get out of this designer. So I'm going to move these things around really quick. All right. So, so we have uh, 7.4 millimeters for our 15 inch middle piece. And then these are just the edge masks, so I'm going to do two of these. But let's let's look at this really quick. Now, how I've made it three millimeters wide, and how long do they need to be? I happen to know that they need to be about 60 millimeters long. So I'm just going to make them 60 millimeters long. All right. So there's one, and then we have our center piece, which is 7.4 millimeters wide which is our 15 inches and I need to make that 60 millimeters now I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, this editor this is the silhouette studio editor um, as you can see this is sort of like your basic setup page and you get to that by clicking this this corner icon right here but it shows you the size of your map but more importantly I'm asking it to show me my cut border which is in red and I have it set to it's in millimeters um, I like working in millimeters you know if you like working in inches that's fine but millimeters just works really good for me it's just really easy to flip 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 back and forth and scale in millimeters um, so anything even though you design it you know like you might think that that this particular where I've set this right here see how it's near the edges you might think that this is fine because it's on the cutting mat and it is 
However, the only area that the cut of the cutting mat that the cutter will address is inside this red tri or this red rectangle. So you you cannot anything that you do not have in that red area will not be cut when you send it to the cutter. So anything you cut has to be in this little red red rectangle, and that's why it's a good idea to just have it show your uh, your cut border because uh, you know it doesn't hurt to know where it is. All right, so we have one now when. When I first got my cameo, I was really worried about waste. I, I wanted to make things as close as possible and and uh, have really tight tolerances on my designs. And, and it turns out that Aura Mask is so cheap and I, and I have so much of it. I mean, when I ordered it, I got 60 yards of it. I really don't need to, you know, obsess over, you know, frac fractions of an inch. So I like to leave a little bit of space between my cuts and that way they'll be easy to remove from the backing. Um, so we have one of one of our cover pieces. We have our center piece right here. I need another cover piece, so I'm going to duplicate that. So basically, this is going to be able to mask one part of the wing. All right, so there'll be a uh, one side of the wing, top or bottom. So I need to actually make four copies of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these items, and when I when I take the the mouse and I click down and drag across all these items, they're kind of grouped together. Now if I right click, I get some options. One of them is to make a compound path, and the other is to group. I, I don't really want to make them a compound path. I'm not exactly sure what making com a compound path does, to be honest with you, but I know that they're already basically compound paths each individual piece, and that's fine. So I'm just going to group them. What that means is now when I go in and click on them, they show up as a group. I can't select any of the individual pieces inside this group. I, I select it as a group. If you want to undo that, you just do ungroup and then you can select the individual pieces. That's a very useful tool in uh, the Silhouette Studio is grouping and ungrouping. Okay, so we've grouped this. So let's make a, let's make a duplicate of this group, which just copies it. Okay, so that's two two wings, so now I only need two more. Well, it looks like I'm gonna to need to make my mat bigger. So I've got it set at a height of 44. So we're gonna to have to go down at least 80. Okay, so let's duplicate. So there's three. and duplicate, there's four. So we now have enough masks to do the entire model. Both sides of the wings, upper, lower, top and bottom. Um, both wings. Um, this is a little too big so I can bring this down. Now, the back of Aura Mask is marked off in 10 centimeter segments. So it's actually easier to cut Aura Mask if you keep these numbers even. So if we can get this to say 70, 70 looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to get it in much closer, but may, maybe. Nope, 60 is no good. Let's go to 70. Now, if you wanted to save yourself 5 millimeters of material, you could set it at 75, but then you have to try to figure out, you know, how to how to how to cut 75 millimeters exact to me it's just faster to cut along the lines on the back of the aura mask so i'm just going to leave this at this even number of 70 millimeters for my height now it looks like i can bring this in a little bit i might be able to get that down to 60. not really no 65 so the next the next even number 70. so i'm going to cut a 70 by 70 the inch square of Aura Mask, and then uh, we'll send it to the printer. I'm going to talk a little bit about Send. When you click on Send, this this particular screen shows up, um, and here's here's everything that's going to cut. Um, there's a little more to this, and you can go into some different options. But basically, I want to use the Auto Blade. Um, but immediately, I notice something. Uh, for some reason, when I start up my uh, Silhouette and I make a new cut. It, it comes up with a uh, cardstock. Now, if I were to send it to the printer right now with Aura Mask loaded on it, 
it would literally uh, carve into my cutting mat and carve right through the paper. It would it would basically do cutouts, and, and uh, it, it's just way too much force and way too deep. And you do not want to do this. It'll just make a mess. You <laughs> you do not want to do this. So what you do, um, I have set up a uh, a setting for Aura Mask, and I call it. The one I use is 810 Overcut. Now, uh, a user back in the Cutting Edge actually pointed out uh, when we first started that, that a, a way to get much better cuts is to use uh, small overcuts. And, and sure enough, it works. And I'll show you how to set the, those settings here real quick. I tend, I, on my Cameo 4, I'm using uh, the Auto Blade, which does it a remarkably good job. Um, I'm using a force of three and a speed of two. Um, if I click more, it shows me my overcuts as being 0.1. I'm not exactly sure what this this default blade depth and stuff is. I think you could ignore it, but the overcut is really the important part. So 0.1 overcuts. And I didn't change anything, so I don't need to save. So when I hit the send button, it will just print. But first, I have to cut my my paper out, my aura mask. So here is our cut aura mask. These are the squares that I was talking about, these 10 millimeter squares. So it's really easy to just cut things off in 10 millimeters. The aura mask itself is, uh, this is aura mask 810. It's just this transparent gray substance. So in order to make this work, we're gonna have to use this silhouette cutting mat. Now this is called a sticky mat and it comes with, uh, it's. It's a plastic sheet that's got an adhesive on the other side and it keeps this backing paper over it to ensure it holds its adhesion. Anyway, to use it, you just remove the backing paper. And here's where the, the cut lines that we were looking at in Designer sort of make more sense. You can see that this ad adhesive is only applied along this edge. There's, a, there's an edge here that no, no adhesive is applied. So that's kind of what you can think of the cut, the cut lines on the... Um, designer are is they're just basically where the sticky is so what we do is we're just going to place this on here and we're going to try to just be as close as we can it doesn't have to be quite perfect but uh anyway there you go that's just a 70 by 70 millimeter chunk of aura mask So here's the finished job. I've removed it from the uh, the sticky mat and put the cover back on the back on the mat. And but this is this is the base of what we have. Um, I did trim a little bit of the excess off the edge, and I'll just use this for masking material later. Um, this aura mask actually is fantastic for just using as cheap tape because it is again it's cheap, and there's there's I have a lot of it. So probably one of the the first things I like to do is like they call it weeding. And so I'm going to actually just use my fingers to pull this apart. But this is just how easy this stuff is to get apart. I'm going to pull the excess backing off. And this is why I was saying that I like to leave a little bit of a, a space to, to, to make it easier to remove things. As you can see, it just comes off very easily. And this is the process of weeding. Makes it very easy to see. Whoops. Oh, wow. It didn't cut that. Oh, actually, that's the bottom piece. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're good. So, so that's the finished mask right there. So all I have to do now is take this and put it on the model. And all I have to do to pull the individual parts off, and again, I can just do this with my fingers or tweezers or how, how, however you prefer to work, and see how easy that is to get off. And again, that is 7.4, 7.94 millimeters, which is equivalent to 15 inches in 148 scale. All right, so we've taken some time and we've put the masks on the model. This is what it winds up looking like. These are the two th three millimeter end pieces with the center removed. And this is what they look like when I put them on. But just to show you how clean that is. And then all I have to do now is just remove the center piece. And I'm ready to paint. Well, not quite ready. I'm going to use, reuse the centerpiece, actually. 
to uh, extend the mask so that I don't wind up getting yellow in places I don't want it. But we're almost ready to paint. Well, here's the final result. The masks have been removed. And as you can see, we just have stripes. Nothing fancy, but certainly 15 inch in scale stripes. All right, there you go. Using uh, using your using a cutter uh, makes this kind of work very easy.